Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to continue with this Galatians chapter 4 run through. And, you know, this chapter 4 is a deep theological chapter, again, just like chapter 3, and I guess a lot of Galatians. Definitely not like Philippians or Colossians. Uh, there's a lot more to break down here. I've went over this a lot, and I don't know that I can say a whole lot going through this, uh, cause, you know, I don't want to say something that's not right or whatever, and I've looked at these a lot. There's a lot of controversy over this. Anyways, there's a few different sections here, sons and heirs, verses 1 through 7. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So I think he's I mean, continuing about how uh, talking about, you know, the law, the works of the law in the Old Testament. So when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. And so in verse 3, when he says that, you know, when we were children, he's not speaking, I don't think, literally of, you know, being a child. But he's saying, you know, we were as children when we were under the law. And, uh. God sent forth his son and two which is uh, you know speaking of the deity of Christ and uh, the eternal sonship of Christ you know that Jesus you know that the, the son of God the second person of the Trinity was always the son of God because here we have God, meaning the Father, sent forth his Son, made of a woman. So he was already the Son before the Incarnation. Made of a woman under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of the Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So this is just all continuing with the idea that we're saved by faith, not by works. Um, you know, and, and through our faith we're made sons, we're... we're Adopted, um, and you know, the true people of God are the, all the believers. There is no more Jew or Gentile. So I'm just going to kind of speedily go through this unless there's something that I can elaborate more on that I can remember. Uh, Paul's concern for the Galatians, chapter or verses 8 through 20. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which were by nature no gods. Okay, speaking to the Gentiles, I guess, you know, worshiping uh, pagan idols and such. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? <clears throat> ye observe days and months times and years, saying that they're, you know, they're following the Jewish traditions, um, you know, because they think that's what they're supposed to do, just like at the beginning of Galatians, he said, you know, who hath bewitched you, um, I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain, I am afraid of you. That's interesting language. Uh, he's not afraid of them, but 
right. Uh, I guess it means afraid for you. Maybe I don't. I don't know exactly how to explain that one. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, and I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at first. And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despise not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Received him even as if he was an angel of God, or even if, or even as Christ Jesus. And, you know, this is all stuff that I want to look more into again. Uh, you know, speaking of how through the infirmity of the flesh he preached the gospel unto them. I don't know exactly what he means by that and he says in my temptation which was in my flesh he despised not so it's not really clear to me exactly what all is being said here where is then the blessedness you spake of for I bear you record that it had been if it had been possible you would have been plucked you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me I am therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that you might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I travail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Not saying that well, he doesn't know if they're really truly followers of Christ, and it all has to do with them, you know, trying to please God by their works, by following the law, and basically forsaking you know, justification by faith you know, in place of that. Example of Hagar and Sarah, verse 21 through 31. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he was but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So saying, you know, there's a true Jerusalem in heaven, it is heaven. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. And you know, when he says that these things are an allegory, and he's speaking of, Abraham having two sons. You know, obviously those things literally happen. That's historical. But, you know, it was... There's a reason, you know, that we can learn from it. You know, it had... Uh, there's more meaning to it than saying... And so it represents the two covenants... Now 
now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? So it's just like the Jews have persecuted the Gentile believers, or the Christians in general, I suppose. Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So the true heirs are the true Jews, the true believers, not the Jews by nature. It's not about following the law. really great chapter that just needs to be examined in more detail and you know, verse by verse what needs to be looked at a lot deeper so thanks for watching god bless